Hello, indie authors. Today we are doing episode 16, and it is June 19th, 2019, as I record this. Welcome to the Indie Author Mentor Show. I am Valerie Isan. So let's um, get into the author life segment. Today, actually, we're going to be finishing up our round of book launch um, strategies. So last week we did book launch part one, and today we're going to do book launch part two. So let's get on to the author life segment. Life has been getting in the way of manuscript time, I'm sorry to report. I have been working on the manuscript this week because, well, I'm getting ready for this vacation. <laughs> And I was telling my husband yesterday that I needed a week off just to get ready for the vacation. And then I remembered that I often say that about coming back from a vacation, <laughs> that I need a whole week off just to catch up. So note to self, if I'm going on vacation, writing and revising is going to take a big hit in time-wise, I guess, and productivity because I'm... You know, you just have so much brain capacity, and if it is diverted to some other big project, like selling your house, or going on vacation, or, you know, something like that, a, a, an illness in the family, those are all um, things that kind of throw you for a loop. Now, vacations are maybe not so um, life-disrupting as, you know, a, a chronic illness or a death in the family, or a job change, or something like that. And I find great comfort in knowing that when you have a plan of action, which I take comfort in just all by itself, but if I have a plan of action and something gets in the way, some life thing... I take comfort in knowing that I don't have to stick to that plan. In fact, trying to stick to that plan is just, that way lies madness. So I can pivot. I can just make a new plan. And so in this way, I can not beat myself up so much about not getting done what I wanted to get done. So I hope that also gives you a little bit of um, comfort and, whew, <laughs> Okay, so I am going to Minnesota and Wisconsin this weekend, seeing both family and friends. Some of my, well, the friends, most of the friends I've seen within the year, we try to get together yearly. We live all over the United States, so we hop around the U.S., going to different places. Last year, it was in Lincoln City, Oregon, which was really easy for me because I live in Oregon, but um, this year, it's the Midwest, so... We're going to hit Wisconsin. But first, I'm going to Minnesota to see my family, some of which I haven't seen in 10 years. And the youngest niece, I actually haven't met at all. So I'm hoping that this vacation will help me reconnect with that side of my family. So that's important to me. Um, I had my monthly review with another author friend of mine. We get together monthly and check in with each other about our businesses and our book publications and try to help each other out. And it's sort of a mastermind. It's hard to mastermind with two people, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I like having the, the connection with other authors where you can talk shop and say, you know, this part isn't working for me. What do you think? Should I do this or that? And so that's really helpful. And I always leave, um, you know, being inspired and and usually have a new mindset about something after that meeting. So that was nice. Um, this episode of the Indie Author Mentor will conclude season one. The podcast is going to resume and these YouTube videos on July 17th, mid-July. Um, and during this little hiatus, I'm going to be planning out what season two will be all about. So if you have any requests or suggestions for topics or questions that you want addressed and answered, please email me, 
Valerie at ValerieIsanAuthor.com, I-H-S-A-N. Or you can direct message me on Instagram or, or Facebook. So, um, so yeah, that's exciting. I have um, several ideas percolating, and I will solidify them and, and see you after this episode next um, July, mid-July, with Season 2, Episode 1. Well, actually, I don't think you. I don't think Apple Podcasts let you do that. It's so it'll be season two, episode seventeen, I guess. <laughs> um, in the I'm reading section, um, I'm still doing White is for Witching, which is getting much better. The point of view has settled down and is mostly, well, it's it's more obvious to me who's who's talking, so that helps me complete the book. And I'm um, almost done with the You Need a Budget. So again, that is inspiring me. And I suggest if you are in need of a budget overhaul, that maybe that book would be good for you too. Um, and because I'm going on vacation, I'm already thinking about what books to read next. Um, so because of the vacation, I'm going to be choosing lighter stuff or favorite authors that I know I can really get into really quickly. And so that probably means some Sarah Addison Allen and Louise Penny, among others. So I usually um, take my Kobo reader stocked full of books that I can choose from and a couple of paperbacks just in case, you know, the battery dies and I don't have a way to charge because I can't leave the house without a book. I'm sure you know what that's like. Okay, no new patrons this week. I hope you will consider to become a patron because I am shooting for that $125 a month goal. And when I hit that goal, I'm going to be doing a free monthly bonus episode of a Q&A. So you can treat me as a, it's like a little mini coaching session. So you can send your questions in and I'll answer them. And, you know, doing that at a dollar a month is a pretty inexpensive um, coaching session. So please consider becoming a patron now. You can find me at patreon.com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. The support of my patrons on Patreon helps make this show and other projects possible. Plus, being a patron of the arts is a totally cool thing to do. For less than the cost of a tasty hot beverage or a pack of gum, as low as a dollar a month, you too can become a patron of the arts and me. Resources. I'm going to give a shout out once again to the self-publishing podcast, or let me start that over. The selfpublishingformula.com. Um, they have courses there that are excellent, super excellent, and they're always um, cutting edge. They always are re-recording their videos so that you have, you know, up to the latest information about certain topics. And as the industry changes, their course changes too to reflect those industry changes. And um, Mark Dawson has two classes, one that's geared more towards the beginner intermediate, and that's the self-publishing 101 course. And then he's got a more advanced, um, I mean, anybody can take it, but it's called Ads for Authors. And it's not just Facebook ads, it's AMS ads, or I guess they call it Amazon ads now, Amazon ads and BookBub ads and and well, just ads, ads in general, <laughs> ads for authors. And um, so, yeah, I would totally check out that. That is selfpublishingformula.com to get information about that. And the courses only open up once or twice a year. So if you find one that sounds fantastic, then get your name on the wait list and you will be notified when the um, registration opens up. Um, I have a podcast recommendation. I'm sure I must have mentioned this before, but booksandtravel.com, or excuse me, Books and Travel podcast, it's at booksandtravel.page, is Joe Francis Penn's uh, new podcast on traveling <clears throat> and, and sometimes the, the darker side of traveling. <clears throat> excuse me. 
Um, this this uh, latest episode is on Hawaii, so, <laughs> and she's had a really she's had some really great ones in there. One on scuba diving. I know I've mentioned the scuba diving one, so so check out that podcast if you're looking for a new one. And lastly, um, Tex Thompson is such a kick in the pants. She is so funny. If you go to thetexfiles.com, you can check her out. Um, I've heard her speak several times. I've taken a class from her or a workshop from her. And uh, I'm on her newsletter, and I just got her newsletter yesterday, and it's so funny. She's from Texas, and she has that voice in her writing that just, I mean, you can hear Texas all over it. It's so funny. So if you're looking for um, an inspirational and hilarious newsletter in your email, or in email box, in inbox, wow, that was hard to say today, then totally check out Tex Thompson, thetextfiles.com. Um, she's got a pretty funny blog there, too, if you're not into adding another um, newsletter to your email inbox. Okay, so main topic, book launch part two. So I told you last week that we're going to be focusing on um, different strategies that some of the pros use. So I mentioned Mark Dawson earlier. That was not unintentional. So um, Mark Dawson, what he does when he launches a book is asks himself, what can I do for my subscribers? He really wants to treat his email subscribers as gold. He wants to make sure they're happy and excited to get any newsletter or email from him. So when he launches a new book, he does a soft launch, which means he puts it at 99 cents on all the sites. And he then emails his ARC team, the advanced reader team. And since they've already received a book, remember we talked last week about um, having an advanced reader team and sending them the book two or three weeks early so that on launch day there would be a review ready so after you know when it is launch day he emails them again and says okay it's 99 cents for today only I know you have the book already but if you could just buy it for less than a dollar it's as low as I can possibly make it you know Amazon won't let me do it any lower than that then I'll get that nice little um, verified purchase tag and Amazon really likes that. So, um, but you don't have to buy it again. You can just go and leave up your review today. Thanks so much. So that soft launch means not everybody knows about it. He just wants his mailing list and his advanced readers to know that it's there for 99 cents. And then the next day he's going to make it full price. And that's when he's going to tell the rest of the world. That'll be the hard launch. So soft launch, 99 cents, Tell the advanced reader team, go leave your reviews now. And, and then, uh, so let me put some dates on that. So if he were to do a soft launch on Saturday, say, and he'll put it for 99 cents, he'll send an email to his ARC team, ask them to buy and to leave a review. They've already read it. They've already gotten it for free. Um, and then on Monday, he can hard launch it at the full price. So... It's a little bit more than, it's a few days to get um, his team to get in there over the weekend and leave their reviews and, and buy that copy. So if you carry the Amazon ranking slash sales, they're kind of, they're not the same thing, but but they reflect heavily on each other. Um, if, if you can carry that for three or four days, on a, on a higher level, then Amazon will reward you and the little algorithms, the little Amazon bots will start taking over and start merchandising your title. So if you can get a lot of sales that last for that, you know, three or four days, then let's see, how do you, I think the way it works is the preceding day's score, your author rank, your sales rank, um, is decreased by half and added to the current day's points. 
maybe that won't make any, I hope that's, I hope that's clear enough. <laughs> so, well, anyway, you're not rewarded for, for a spike. So if you try to get all of your people to buy on one day and you spike up and then nobody buys the next two or three days, Amazon's not going to look at that very interestingly. They're going to say, oh, look at this one. This one is sticky. So sticky is better than spike. So if you have, let's just say, 30 sales on Monday and 30 sales on Tuesday and 28 sales on Wednesday, Amazon's bots are going to say, ooh, look at that. Let's start merchandising that. That's a pretty um, current, not current, consistent sales. So let's give it a little bit more juice and see if we can get more people to buy it. But if Amazon just sees you sell 100 copies one day and then two the next day, they're going to be like, oh, that was okay. I guess that's done. Nobody's going to buy that book now. So they're not going to put any um, attention on it. They're not going to give it that extra Amazon juju stuff. So, so keep that in mind. So that's kind of Mark Dawson's idea is set it for 99 cents for a couple of days and just let his 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 people know about it, his mailing list subscribers. Because if your mailing list wants to get an expensive books, then that's how to make your subscribers happy by giving them the option to buy your book at a, a discounted price. And remember we talked um, yet yeah, last week about incentivizing and that would clearly be a case of it's only gonna be 99 cents for this weekend so get in there or it's only gonna be 99 cents for this day get in there and get it now and then the hard launch happens where you tell the rest of the world and then that's when you can put it up on um, social media and you know really make a big deal about your hard launch day it's finally here everybody and you can um, yeah, blow it up on social media and and have those ads on there too. And we talked about ad stacking also. Okay. I'm trying to get to the next slide. So actually, we didn't talk about ad stacking. I'm going to talk about it now. Ad stacking is where you buy more than one ad and have it on different days and you buy them from different platforms because a lot of places won't let you buy, excepting, you know, Facebook or Amazon, but like say um, Bargain Booksy or Free Booksy or you can't, you can't put out an ad. You could put out an ad for one day every 90 days. Basically, that's it. So, um... You can buy a free booksy ad for one of your free promo days if you're going the Amazon KDP Select program and you've got those uh, free promo days. So you can get a free booksy ad, um, and that's freebooksy.com, and 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 put that on one of those free promo days if you are on KDP Select or just one of the days of your launch week if you're going wide. Uh, Bargain Booksy is another place that you can buy um, if you're just having a discounted price as opposed to a free book. Uh, Facebook is always an option too, putting up um, some ads, Facebook ads during the first week of your launch. Amazon ads, AMS ads, BookBub ads. That's not the featured deal. Anybody can go in and get a, um, a BookBub ad, though. And um, David Gochran also talks a lot about BookBub ads. So you can check out um, his stuff, too. He's got a little tutorial, uh, not a tutorial, but a, on his blog, there'll be and on his email list too. If you if I'm on his email list, so now I can't remember if it's on his blog or if it's on his email list, but he's got a th a 3 week um thing of of bookbub ad tutorials, I guess for lack of a better word. And he was also just featured on Mark Dawson and James Blatch's um podcast, the self publishing show.com. He was just recently interviewed on that um where he talked about bookbub ads. So if you want to know about those, you can check out that. That's another little resource there. Um, if you are wanting to, this isn't an ad per se, but kind of. It's not one that you pay for. So 
even better. <laughs> if you are publishing wide and you let Kobo, KoboWritingLife.com, if you let them know six to 12 weeks before launch that, um, that you've got this upcoming release, give them a, a splash page, you know, with the cover and the, and the uh, book description. And if you send it to them in advance, then you can maybe be put on a special upcoming new releases list. I, I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but, but it's that type of list. And that would show up on their, their homepage. So that would, would give you some like pre-buzz, I guess. So if you have, uh, maybe even if you put it up on a pre-order on Kobo and send them the splash page, then they can start. If it's a, if it's a book that sounds like it's going to pop and it's got a great cover and it sounds really interesting to the merchandising team at Kobo, then they'll put it on their page, on their front page. And that can give you some extra boost too, which isn't really an ad, but. Anyway, so my, my, my point is, if you're going to buy an ad, you know, buy three ads. Have them on different days so that you can keep that sticky going on your sales and not just have a spike because that is not rewarded. Okay, another um, strategy, I guess you could say, especially if you're on KDP Select, this comes from a book by Chandler Bolt. And um, so if you're in the Select program, you have five free promo days every 90 days. So you can go into, before you um, publish your book, you can go in and you can select which days you want to be your free days. So I would do like, um, well, pick three days. And then email your list and tell them it's going to be three, it's going to be free for these three days. Put it out on social media, email your subscribers, and so tell them it's only going to be there for three days, but buy five days worth of ads. I mean, not buy, but mark on your free promo days that you're going to take all five of them. But just tell your list it's only going to be there for three days. Um, again, this is from Chandler Bolt. Um, and your goal for doing this is to get your ranking in in the top 100 on the Amazon list, whether it is overall or in the free downloads or in your um, category, one of, one of those. And when that happens, when when your free downloads get you to the point where you're in the top 100 list, then raise your price to 99 cents and cancel the rest of the free days. So his goal when he launches is just to get on that high ranking list and to get as much, um, well, money out of it as possible. <laughs> so again, to recap, you tell Amazon you want the five free days and you mark which ones you want. You email your list and you tell social media that they're going to be available for free on these three days. So the idea is that you'll have it three days to get you up to that one top 100 list. And once it hits the list, cancel those other two days. You, you can't cancel the days you said to your people and on social media that it would be free. But once those three days are up, and you are in the top 100 list, then you can cancel the other two free days and you'll just have them to use for later within that 90-day period on KDP Select. If you don't reach the top 100 list within those three days, then, you know, keep it free and, and hope that it gets up to that list within that five days. So, um, and also Chandler Bolt says to manually go in and turn off the um, the free days instead of just even if you only have like 12 hours left or something like that go in manually and turn turn it off so that 
there will be those people that are still trickling in and seeing, oh, this is in the top 100, I'm going to go in and I'm going to check this book out. And if they see that it's at 99 cents now, they'll be like, oh, it's not free anymore. Oh, well, I'll just go ahead and get it. Everybody seems to like it, so I'll pay the 99 cents. So you're going to capture a little bit of money there, um, and that will increase your author ranking um, as the paid prices come in because your author ranking isn't really affected with free downloads, I don't think. Um, and then raise the price incrementally until over the next three or four days until you get to full price. So again, the idea is just to capture as much money as you can on ride that riding that wave. So you've got the Mark Dawson idea where he does 99 cents as an incentive to get the people in to the um, into the ecosystem there at Amazon or wherever you're selling, and then just put the price back up. So it's more of a incentivizing the the purchase right away. You start with the discount and then raise it up to full price within two or three days. But Mark Dawson has a very large mailing list, like 10,000 people, I think. So he can make a lot of money on that 99 cents um, purchases in the first two or three days. And then it goes up to full price. And he can still ride that Amazon um, sticky, that Amazon wave instead of spiking. And he does the soft launch and the hard launch. Chandler Bolt does it a little bit differently and he's mostly um, sticking with the, the KDP Select idea where he does the five free promo days. He only tells them about the three and he's trying to, over time, he raises the price incrementally, still trying to, to capture those um, I guess the, f the freebie seekers, you know, you get a lot of downloads for the free and Amazon starts seeing you go up in the charts and maybe you're on the top 100 charts. So they've, they're going to be paying attention to you then. So both, both will work. Um, and I guess you just decide which one sounds best to you and in your author personality. And, um, the Chandler Bolt one is more, I would say hands-on more. You have to be looking at it, you know, every day and seeing what's happening because you need to go in and manually turn stuff off and change the price multiple times over the week of your launch. So if you're not really into that, you just kind of want to set it and forget it, then, then the Mark Dawson one is a little, you still have to go in and change the price from 99 cents to regular price, but you only have to do that once. So those are two options for launch strategies. And there's loads of others. I just wanted to give you two different ones to think about. So after the launch, um, after the soft launch, so if you're doing just the, the soft launch and you haven't really told many people about it, but you've, you've got it up there now, um, that's when you can go and you update your Amazon author page. You cannot do this before you launch. Before the book is in the Amazon ecosystem, you cannot update your author page to, to show that you have this new book. Um, all of the other places that we've talked about through the last month or so, um, like BookBub or Goodreads or you know all these other places, you can upload the book information and have it be there and just have the release date there. And so it's kind of a you know coming soon thing, but you can't do that on on Amazon unless you have a, a pre-order set up. So make sure that you update your Amazon author page to represent the new book that you have out for um, for sale. And then you have to link your books in Amazon and that can take a that can take 24 hours to do um, if you've requested it. And they'll do it itself. It'll do it itself maybe It'll take longer than 24 hours if you just let it do it itself. Um, sometimes it won't do it, and you have to go in and, and say email them and say, hey, can you link these books up? And what I mean by link is um, you'll have your your ebook on the KDP dashboard or whatever, but you'll but you'll also have your paperback through KDP Print up there, but they're not going to show up on the same page. 
for the customer. So if the customer goes to, for instance, I'll just use my book, Smell the Apple Tea, um, The Scent of Apple Tea. I just combined the two <laughs> books titles. They both have something to do with smell or scent, so I confused them for a second there. So when I was launching The Scent of Apple Tea, I had uploaded it to KDP and to, at the time it was CreateSpace. And so they were there, but when somebody would go to the Kindle store and look up that book, the Kindle book would show up, but not the paperback. So I wanted them to go to this one title and have the options of getting a Kindle book or the option of getting the paperback. I didn't want them to have to go to different places on Amazon to find them because what would happen is what if somebody, you know, went to get the book and they only wanted paperback, but all they could find was the, the Kindle book. Well, they don't have a reader and they don't want to read it. They want a real book to open up with pages and everything. So you don't want to disappoint your customers when you're launching because that's when you want the buzz to be the highest and have them go in and, and get their book. So I would um, be proactive and email Amazon during that soft launch and ask them to link those two up so that they're available on the same page for the customers. And then after the launch, you're also going to want to change your book to full price, whatever that is for you, and um, get ready for your author events and your signings. And we talked about different ways uh, to do that, different brainstorms. Uh, we brainstormed a couple different options last week, literary events and book signings and such. So do that. Um, and let's see, I think that's probably it. I'm checking my notes, tell the advanced readers, we already did that, tell your mailing list about the launch, did that, and then again, I said this, but I'll just reiterate, also during the hard launch, not the soft launch, but the hard launch, um, to go up on social media and tell everybody else about the book. Um, you can do a soft launch uh, promotion on social media if you want. Um, actually, I would, you know, <laughs> just to get as many per people coming in and buying the book as possible at the beginning there, trying to get on those top 100 lists. Um, and then the following, um, during the week of the launch, I would stay aware and checking in on any of the ads that you are running and what your sales are doing during those ads when those ads hit so you know oh when I had the one day book bub ad I sold this many books and when I had the the bargain booksy ad I sold this many books and when I did the Facebook ad I sold this many books and it's a cumulative yes like you start writing a wave and you get this organic traffic seeing it too because the Amazon bots and you know all of it kind of blends together into a big soup and you don't really know what's causing what to happen but just stay as much stay attentive and see what's working best for your book um, so that you can try to to um, you know do it again next time and then after I would say three weeks have passed I would email my list again and say, oh, I hope you liked the book. Please consider leaving a review. Here's the link right to the review page for you to leave it and, and maybe even give instructions on how to leave reviews because, I mean, we're authors and we leave reviews a lot of times when we finish a book, if not every book we read, because we know how important it is to other authors. But a lot of the people on our mailing list are not authors. In fact, a lot of them, yeah, maybe none of them are. So they don't often maybe will leave a review. So having explicit directions on how to do it will will take the the um, well the stress out of doing it for your customers, for your readers. And um, yeah, send an email to the mailing list three weeks later and ask for reviews again with the links and I would do that with the advanced reader team as well just to scoop up any remaining people that haven't left a review for you because reviews are important it's social proof and if you let your readers know that it's important to you and you do the ask then you'll get more than if you don't do the ask so Keep asking for reviews. Another cool tip that I heard along the way through the years, and I've tried a couple times myself, and it, it's you know successful. You get a few here and there, is to ask for 
um, the birthday present of a review. So on your birthday, you could tell the social media world, hey, it's my birthday today. I would love it if you'd go leave a review for one of my books if you haven't already done so. That would be a great birthday present. And some people will love the novelty of that and go ahead and do it. Or you can also do that on your book's birthday. So if you know that you launched in, I don't know, June 16th or something, uh, of course that's passed already, but anyway, just a day that your book was published on, when that rolls around again, you can send out a little notice saying, hey, it's my book's birthday, please leave a review for us, whatever, something like that. All right, that is my entire checklist. So the next thing, the very last thing on my checklist right here is print out another one of these lists and start the next book. Because the best marketing you can do for your book is to write the next one. Thank you so much for joining me on How to Launch Your Books, Part 1 and 2. Thank you so much for listening to the first season of the Indie Author Mentor Show. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. And I will see you in Season 2. If you want to give me any uh, tips on uh, topic ideas, please email me, ValerieIsanAuthor.com. Valerie at ValerieIsanAuthor.com and or direct message on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy writing, happy publishing, and I will see you mid-July for the next season. Be well.